don't know how to start. Well, do you want me to start? Do you want to start? Yeah. I'm just, I'm just nervous. That's no, all. Because, enough. because the last few weeks, I've, you know, the tried and trusted Sai, you've, you've poo pooed it, and I don't know what to do. So I go now, yeah. Start it. So how are you, Andrew? Thanks, honky tonk. I'm all right there. Thanks. Yeah. That was a nice thanks for no particular reason. What thanks for asking, kind of thing. Yeah. It's now, thanks for being Andrew. Here. My main problem with all the podcasts I listen to is that they insist on this music at the top, yeah. right, for far too long. I listen to um, Middlesbrough Football p- podcast, a Borough podcast, a minute 20 before the podcast <laughs> started. Now, my problem is, is it sounds like you're tuning, you know, if you're tuning a ra- to a ra- for a radio station yeah. and you hit adverts, you think, oh, fuck it, I'll move on. Yeah. Right? So... I'm trying to start this one with familiar sounds, as you know. Yeah. We've been yeah. in the supermarket, etc. It's, it's working really well. Yeah. So here's my suggestion this week, Andrew. Okay. Um, I, I wondered about starting the show with the sounds from the from Newcastle Airport, right, as you fly from Newcastle oh. to your holiday in Spain. Right. Here's some suggestions, okay. yeah? Right. right. Will passenger Doug Stott please report to the information desk? Your Alsatian has followed you to the airport and is kicking up a shitstorm. See what I mean? Good one. Or a little kiddie saying, Ma'am, I want some chick and dippers. Oh, <laughs> shut up about dippers, Kieran, and sup your blue drink. Your dad's got a reed fart on already. See, it sounds from the airport. Very familiar. Passengers are reminded that all blue drinks must be disposed of before entering the departure cages. <laughs> Life in Newcastle. Uh, oh. Mams are reminded that your nippers are not allowed to go wee wee in the large feature potted plants. <laughs> so, like we've brought. Oh, that's really got me holiday mood, that has. And it, in it, no. You totally. Know, you're at Newcastle, ready yeah. for your flight to, where would it be? Mala. Alicante, I reckon. Alicante. Yeah. Alicante. Alicante, we're all passengers for Alicante, sub up the blue drinks. <laughs> <laughs> we're about to depart. Do you want a name, Andrew? Go on, give us some options. Alan Pig. Alan Pig. And that's two G's. Two G's, right? I thought it would be. He works at his dad's farm shop. Yeah. yeah. Now, on the downside, because that's a lovely place to work, isn't it? A farm yeah. shop, isn't it? But on the downside, he's a self-harmer, yeah? <laughs> and he wants a bit of horse on its flank when he was in Israel. Right. So that, that's a little bit about him. What about Jez Bevel? Tell me about Jez Bevel. Yeah, I like, see by the look on your face, you, wanna, you kind of want to be Jez, don't you? Jez Bevel, he lives in a minimalist condo, yeah? Right. Nothing there apart from a 4K TV, a bright orange Swedish office chair, <laughs> and a golden eagle. Ooh. That's Jez's life. I like that. Not bad, is it? Shits McWhirter. <laughs> Yeah. He holds several world records relating to Todd and Todding, yeah? Yes. He's done the thinnest ever. Yeah. He's done the most Todds in the shape of Portugal. <laughs> He's done the hardest Todd ever laid. Yeah. And, interestingly, the most cuddleable Todd. Ugh. Cuddle, if he wanted to cuddle. Yeah. He, he's done a really How cuddle. How would one measure that? Just they got some experts in, right, some like experts. or whatever, yeah, yeah. gave it a cuddle, yeah. and they decided which one they'd enjoyed most. I don't Funky think I Kev. Could, I don't think I could rise up to the occasion. And yeah, be, you're all about be, jazz at the moment, aren't so you? So far. Everybody Funky Kev. Funky Kev, sorry. <laughs> Funky Kev, yeah? Nice chap, got a little bit of a pot belly, little round pot, white pot belly, you know oh. what I mean? He's got lots of miniature pets, you know, like little lamsters, the little dogs, yeah. the little cats and that. He collects glass clowns, so that's nice, isn't right. it, Andy? Um, flat as a 50s vibe. You liking him? Not really. Not Sounds really? Like prick. He's planning to fire a crossbow at his neighbour. <laughs> now it's interesting. So, who are you going to be? <laughs> him. You're going to be yeah, him? Funky cow. Because of the crossbow. Yeah, little pot belly. I've got a couple for you. Well, I've only come up with two because I, I like to think that less is more. I know, I'm sorry, Andy. Uh, you can be Milky Jackson. You'll see him come to life whenever there's one of them, you know, them little pots of long life milk you get on the trains yeah. or in the cafe up the Asda. Yeah. Every time he sees one of them, he'll open it and sniff it and shout, Milk's off! Oh. That's Milky Jackson, a proper little fucker. Milk's off! Milk's off! <laughs> but That's when, him. Right, yo. What, you've got a question about milk Well, I just Jackson? wondered, does the, do those little capsules of milk ever go off? Oh, they don't. That's his thing, you see. Uh, He's trying to subvert the system from yeah. within. So Because it's a long life, isn't it? It's UHT. They don't go off. Yeah, ultra high... Treatment. Tre- tre- treaded upon, yeah. He's well, all right, him. He's all right, yeah. And your other choice Milk's off! Milk's off! Yeah. 
Uh, the Duke of Hopscotch. Right, like he's him already. Got a hopsco- well, hang on. He's got a hopscotch grid painted on his driveway. Yeah. But he's the subject of a banning order and he's got to stay locked in his bathroom every afternoon when the schools are coming out. Right. And his catchphrase is, I didn't do it! Didn't do what, Joke? Mm. Never, don't know. T- never That's says. all he says. I don't like the sound. Not. I don't like the sound of me. So who do I? I'm Mil- gonna... Milky Jackson. No, fuck it. I'll be um, honky tonk. Honky tonk. All right. Milk off. Hey, been a while, Andrew, since I told you about the alderman. It's been a long time. I so, he was dead. Would you like to hear or something? I'd love to. Well, last bank holiday was the annual camping trip for the daft lads. Yeah. You know the ones who can't do out but funny about yeah. and that, right? Um. They're generally funny about round the back of the shops, the ones up north in Stockton. Yeah. Or, or near the, the ga- Yeah, no, they tend to be around the back of the shops or near the garages, you know, the raw garages. Yeah. They tend to... You're funny about on the roofs, can't you? They f- love funny about on the yeah. roofs. Um, anyway, he, he runs an outdoor pursuit centre. It's just outside Hexham and they go there every right. now and then. So I, I went up to help up, help out. So I'm in the minibus with the old one on the way to Hexham to pick up some blue drinks, chicken dippers and yeah. Oreo biscuits for the daft kids, you know? And so the old man says, So, Robert, how is showbiz treating you, Robert? <laughs> I say, it's all right, Bill. I'm doing a new show with Paul Whitehouse where I play a wanker. And he says, that's perfect casting, Robert. <laughs> Only joking, Robert. That Paul Whitehouse, Robert, I bet he's got a nice tight ass. Would you say so, Robert? <laughs> I said, oh, I don't really know, Bill. He keeps himself fit, Paul, so, yeah, probably... You've never looked at Paul Whitehouse's ass. Well, I'm just... I have, and I think it's probably pretty tight, actually, yeah. to be honest, and I told I told the old man that. He says, generally speaking, Robert, does he prefer a slack or a jean, Robert? I said, oh, well, I've thought back. I think he likes a chino, actually, uh, Bill. Slim fit, quite short on the leg, I've always noticed, and he pulls them really quite high up into his crotch. It's quite a betrayal of his working-class roots, that, isn't it? That's chino. what he well, does. Let's not judge him. So, I mean, chinos aren't expensive now, and they are comfortable for the older guy. But they give guy. us a message, don't they? Well, at this point, when I mentioned the, being pulled into the crotch, the older man suddenly pulls into a lay-by, almost slamming the brakes on, you know. Yeah. Get out, Robert. Get out of the car, Robert. Do it now, Robert. So I get out, and um, obviously, and he joins me. He says, show me, Robert. Show me how he wears them, Robert. Stand by that litter bin and show me, Robert. So I pull my jeans up tight into my crotch and stand there by the litter bin uh, with my ass facing the alderman. Uh-huh. He says, hoist your jacket up, Robert. Put one hand on the rim of the bin and turn your head around to face me, Robert. So I do as I told, like... And he takes out his phone. He says, right, turn your head round, Robert, and look over your shoulder, Robert. (laughs) So that's what I do. He says, now says, suits you, sir. Does my bum look big in this? And today I shall mostly be hoisting my chinos up high, Robert. (laughs) So that's what I do. He takes his snaps and we get back in the van. Okay. And uh, old one, don't say another fucking word, Andy. So it's a bit unusual, isn't it? So we're at the outdoor. Well, that's uh, not it. There's more. No, no, no. So we we're at this place in Hexham. There's like dorm, like huts, and there's like a big swimming pool where you you have to do a safety course for canoeing before right. they allow you onto the river. Yeah. So, but basically, what you do, you get in your wetsuit. We all get in the wetsuits, and then you got to get in the canoe and do that roll. Yeah. And show that you, you you're capable of doing that. First in is Biffy Clyro, right? Right. Now he's been drawn all over his wetsuit with a silver marker pen. Right. And nice. it's, it's just interesting. What he's the things he's written. He's written ardent. Yeah. yeah. Lemon curd. Right. Nout matters. <laughs> and Placingo Domingo. This sounds like a set list. Well, There's that's a new EPs yeah. are coming out. Did you see them at Glastonbury? Nah. Oh, shit, they were good, man. Were anyway, uh, he, he turns, he gets in, turns around like a freaking salmon, and we all, be honest. Yeah. Well done, Buffy. Nice That's one, Buffy. Buffy. Next up to me, right, but just as I'm going to get into the pool, the town clerk gives me a little tap on my ass. Just oh. a little tap. Alderman grabs his wrist, right? Matthew, what do you think you're doing, Matthew. How dare you touch Robert on his apricot, Matthew? <laughs> so he apologises. Um, I get in. I struggle a bit, but I manage to, to right myself and climb back out. Yeah. And the the vicar is then just about to get in, and the alderman stops him. He says, I'll go in next if you don't mind, Colin. In gets the alderman, big fucking splash, yeah? But before he reaches the canoe, he starts 
sinking a bit and his arms flailing. He's in trouble. So just without thinking, not that I'm brave or anything, but I jumped in, grabbed him by his waist and I dragged him to uh, to the side with his hands tightly holding on. He, he was on just near my ass, that's he, Andy. Uh, he was just grabbing me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> then, fuck, this is awful, Andy. I don't even know what I should be saying. It's then suddenly his grip just releases. That's not awful. Well, it? yeah, and he's just drowning, you know. He's like going Shit. stiff, you know, like. Going stiff. No, all right, Andrew. <laughs> the others get a few more others get in. We drag him to the side of the pool. Right. And I unzip the front of his suit, and uh, his, his chest's all covered with, like, lard. He's sort of render, you know, for warmth and that. Yeah. Um, and I can't hear a heartbeat as I rest my head on his chest. So I spit out a few long lardy hairs that have got caught in me out uh, on my mouth cpr i shout he needs cpr cpr whispers the alderman i need cpr <laughs> i ask biffy to help but he's just scribbling on his face he's fucking <laughs> doing he, he's panic, no good panic mode so, and i hear the alderman whispering again so i put my ear next to his robert you do it robert i'll pull my wetsuit up into your crotch <laughs> And you say, suits you, sir, after every kiss. So I just get on with it. It's just, to be honest with you... It's a man's life. It's just a risk, one, isn't it? Yeah, one big bone, a snog after another. Yeah. Goes on for ages. And I start thinking, you know what? There's nothing wrong with him. Why am I doing it? But I didn't stop. Yeah. You know, Tom Clark, furious, by the way. Suddenly, the old man pushed me off and he gets up. And he says, well, you lot, that was just a simulation to see you would step up. And just as I thought, it was Robert. Brave Robert. As a reward, Robert can share the honeymoon suite with me in the hotel. The rest of you are in your tents. So, did you think that story was a bit like a film? <laughs> I thought it was a lot more like a play. Like a little play? Yeah. Do you think it would, if I made it into a short film, it would win Cannes films or the, what is it? The, the, doesn't one of the actors, like the Steve McQueen Festival <clears throat> or something? Golden, <sighs> golden nuggets, or whatever. Yeah, Did you yeah. think it felt like? But you think yeah. it felt like a play? Or I something? think they, they they would have put it on Channel Four at about half eleven at night in nineteen eighty four. Not bad though, is it? They wouldn't put it on now. I'm pretty happy with that. Sort of off and all that stuff now, but yeah. you know, back then. Is there anything you want to say just at this moment, Andy? Um, can I call you a shit? Yeah, of course you can. You fucking shit. Nice one, thank you. Hey, I had one of them foot-long sausage rolls this week. Have you seen them? Who does them? Morrison's. One foot. I wandered into Morrison's for the first time in ages, and then right in the in the foyer, yeah. there's this big display, the foot-long sausage roll. How much is it? Foot Quid. Fucking foot hell. Foot long and about a good four inches wide. Yeah. So it wasn't like a thinny mini one. It was like proper, properly how, proportioned. How thick was the tod of sausage in the middle? Or? Thick enough. Thick enough. Thick enough. I mean, there's a good case in a pastry in it, but it was, you know. You've enjoyed it, haven't you? Yeah, got a lovely smile on your face, haven't you? It was like, you know, it was like enduring a telethon. Yeah. It was, took us that long to eat it. There was various <laughs> phases. There was elation yeah. initially, and then there was sort of like tedium after a really? while. And then I got drunk. And then it just. But drunk like, on sausage? No, like? I got drunk while I was eating it. All oh, right. Like as the day went on, it started off at like tea time. Do you have this one? By the time I finished it. No, I didn't. Yeah. No, I just had it cold. By the time I finished it, it was like half 11. Yeah. And I was just pissed. I think if you warm a sausage roll, the problem with that is, is it reveals the unpleasantness a bit, doesn't it? If it reveals the fat. If you get one that's being warmed with, within the bakery, that's all right. But when you get one you've bought cold and then reheat it, yeah. it's never the same. But do you know what I mean, Andy? A cold sausage roll, you can almost convince yourself it's not unhealthy. You know, you don't see the fats or feel the fats as much. That's yeah. all. I, that's what no, I'm saying. No, you're probably right. That's, that's coming from someone who's had a heart condition, though. I wouldn't eat a one foot. That's um. Who, who let's face so it's obsessed. less than ten p an inch. Yeah. Doesn't make it seem that cheap when you think of it like that. It's, one it's inch going of going up to one pound fourteen. I think this right. is an initial entry offer. See, ten p for an inch of sausage roll. Suddenly, that doesn't. Well, you pay about seventy pence for a one in Greg's. It's only like six inches or. Yeah. Eight inches long. No, I'm not doing it relative wide. to Greg's or whatever. I'm just saying, like, generally speaking, and it, a 10 pence for an inch of sausage roll doesn't seem great, really. Do you not think? Not really, no. Not in this day and age. I'm not on one again. I went to uh, a screening, Andrew. A screening? Of a, a war film 
right? Special screening. How did you get invited to that? Because I'm VIP special. Right. I'm like special. Even still special in 2017, you still getting invited. Too fucking right, yeah. Jesus. And what I did was, was Dara O'Brien was in the seat behind me, I right? See. Right. And, um, oh, I, I, well, I, and what I'd, I've tried to tape it, what went, what went on, Andy, and I taped a little bit of it on my phone, see if it. What? Oh. Uh, we have a job to do. Uh, 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 uh
No. 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 Well, you just pull them off, and if some the skin, skin comes, comes off, off you fuck it. Yeah. All right, fair enough. How am I meant to get to the turpentine bowl if I'm stuck with the fucking carpet? Well, I, I think yeah. she's thinking maybe you position it centrally with a Before long, sit down. a long-handled spatula. Before I sit down for the evening. <laughs> Is that it? Yeah, that's it. Well, I've got some questions here from my blood relatives. Oh, for you. I can't wait. <sighs> Dear Uncle Bob, what do you call your front part below your chest? Do you call it your tummy, your belly, your gut, or something else? Tummy. Your tummy. Yeah. Bob's tummy. <laughs> yeah, well, what do you call it? Your fucking gut? Your belly. All right, belly. <clears throat> no, you've said tummy. All right, tummy. Bob, who do you blame whenever something in your stupid life goes wrong? <laughs> Is it a woman, the foreigners, or yourself? Um, Myself. That's a lie. Third question. <coughs> yeah? Harvest is approaching, Bob. Are you planning a harvest festival in your village? And will you once again be performing a human sacrifice using the offcuts from your secret DNA murder lab? DNA murder lab? Yeah. Well, DNA I murder, murder DNA. Lab. That don't make no sense. Well, I don't live in a village. I live in a town. Right. Um, what am I doing? Am I erecting a... a a human sacrifice using the offcuts from your secret DNA. This is just what my kids said. Secret DNA murder lab. Nah, Andrew, that's all bullshit. Don't do any. I don't do any. I know of that, you, you looked out the window there. When I you did, said yeah. that. You couldn't sort of look me in the eye and say. Oh, I'll look no. you in the eye and say no. I don't I, want you to. You've, you've well, already you've looked, looked away. away now, so I yeah, can't look you in the eye. Exactly, which I think proves my point. That's very trick. That's a trickster. <clears throat> Steve McLaren, interested. Well, what would happen if I said no? Well, I've got a good song. I mean, if you said no I politely, I would move on. Me, me personally, <laughs> not asked. The the listenership might, probably might be. Go for it. So when we last saw Steve, right, he was on a train bound for Glasgow, yeah? And Casper, his snake, was on and a... can I just add? Yeah? What has Steve McLaren been linked with this week? Well, I know it all ties in. Andrew. Oh, are you going to mention it? Are you? All fucking ties in. All oh, right, okay. Do you think these aren't? This isn't factual. So when I like me and Casper's on a train heading for Inverness, right? Right. So who are those people looking Just through? People, I think it must be fans. Is it ISIS? A photograph? No. Are they yeah. really? Yeah. You kidding Not me? Of, us, up? of themselves. Well, get your tits out. He has as, oh, he has as well, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, which is a shame. So, <laughs> and Casper's heading to Inverness. So right. Steve gets hold of a guard and explains his predicament. The guard, I don't know if you remember, for the purposes of this story, all British Rail employees are Welsh. Right. And I've stuck with that. Yeah. Um, oh, that's terrible, sir. Excuse me, sir. Why have you got a crescent of ham on your head? That's not a ham crescent, says Steve. That's me mid-head oxbow lake, you Rodney Ooh. Plonker. It separates my hair island from the mainland hair. Let me tell you all about it. Let me take you to the West Sussex Downs. Come with me, squeeze me, listen to the sounds. We'll laugh, we'll dance, you'll pat me on the head. If you're a lady, we might just... End up in me bed. I'm a creature with a feature that will blow your gypsy mind. I've a hairstyle, it's unique mind that nature has designed. Mid head oxbow, why don't you jump one in? Mid head oxbow, it's perfect for a swim. Do you know what I mean? Do you feel me? It's bigger than both of us. It's a new way, full of joy and hope. It's a mid head oxbow, take it for a spin. It's a mid head oxbow, it's made from actual skin. Please, world, you've got to listen. Together we can end the madness. A different world where harmony costs nothing. The front bit's an island full of fruit and spice. The back lot is a country where everything is nice. On Sundays and Mondays, no one goes to sleep. You can cross to the island, the water's not that deep. There's a market selling street food and homopath homeopathy. There's a park and a cafe where the sausage rolls are free. I'm offering you a life free from pain and skullduggery. A, a safe space where you can dream of a life without pain and hardship. Mid... 
It's a mid-head ox bow. No new hope for humankind. Mid-head ox bow will take away your fears. Mid-head ox bow will lubricate your beard. You have to believe me. It's a movement, an uprising. It's got a lot going for it. Come on, sign up. Let's change things for the many, not just the few. <laughs> what do you think, Andy? Seven out of ten. Just seven, <laughs> you fucker. <laughs> so the guard says, how in the very hell, sir? I tell you what, I'll phone ahead to Coventry and ask the station master to hold the train. We're only five minutes behind, lovely boy. That's nice, isn't it? So they get to Coventry and the station master's on the platform and him and Casper are playing with Casper's boing boing button. Right. Having a right good laugh. So that's nice, isn't it, Andy? Um, ah, Mr. McCrallan, is it? What a lovely snake. What's his name? Bloody Rodney Plonker, if I had my way, says Steve, because he's a bit annoyed, Andy, because yeah. he nicked off to the wrong train. Come on, Casper, let's get a fart on. So the um, station master says, I've told the guard to allow you in first class. Less people. Be nicer for Casper, innit? Boy, oh, there's lovely and tidy, innit? So they get settled. Casper looks a bit bashful. And Steve won't even look look at him when he rests his head on Steve's lap. He's in a right old, got a cob on with him. Suddenly there's a lot of huffing and puffing. And out of the toilets comes Sean Dyche. He's on his way back to Burnley. Right. Right. Probably have to change at Preston or something. I don't know. Yeah, I reckon so. Um, and he's uh, he's been to a big exhibition in London of those machines that Shaggy, you know them. Yeah. So she <laughs> says, "All right, Steve. All right, Casper. Do you mind if I join you? I've just had a tod, and some company takes me mind off the ache I get in my ball sack after I've passed a Hobbit sock or two." <laughs> Not at all. Hey, how's it going at Burnley? All right, he says. Just treading water. If I keep my head down, I might get the England job when Southgate gets his final taxi. If not, I'm going to open up a welding academy once we go down. No foreigners, just local lads. Oh, my bloody balls. Now, at this point in the day, Andy, I heard about Danny Rose saying he wasn't happy with his wages. Yeah, he wants to go north, doesn't he? And he wants to go up north. So I'm going to abandon that. I abandoned that story, right? <laughs> to tell Fine. you, because I got straight on the phone to me contacted Spurs right. training ground. So this is what happened when he. This is true. What happened when he turned I'm up? I'm sure training it is. Yeah. Yesterday, well, he arrived. It's at Enfield or something in his white and black trench coat, checked trench coat, and his Jimmy um, Chew crocodile high top, Stanny. Yeah. No sooner had he stepped out of his car that he was grabbed from behind, right, and a large Gucci hold all was pulled over his head. His hands were taped behind his um, back and he was bundled into the boot of a Bentley. Right. Right. So fearing he was um, being kidnapped, he started to count to ten, then back down to one, then back up to ten. That's good in a kidnap situation. I think I, I yeah. know why he did it. I don't think it's going to help him. But, but the, the thought that he was doing something probably helped rest his mind. Do you know Stop what I mean? Stop him shitting himself. Yeah. Uh, about 20 minutes later... The car came to a halt at the boot opened and he finds himself staring at three masked men, all wearing black head to toe. Mm. He was a, in a dead-end alley. So that's not a very nice place to end up in, no, is no. it, Andy? No, And the first bloke <laughs> in the mask... <laughs> the first bloke in the mask, I'll call him Mask One, yeah? Right. He says... You have been kidnapped, mister, which I know is very upsetting, <coughs> but we're pretty tough guys and don't give a fluffery buffery about other people's feelings. I wonder who he is. Oh, I know. <laughs> Sounds like a wrong one. Mask two. Yes, I second that. We're a very nasty lot and we'll stop at nothing. If you don't cooperate, we might even douse you with bunkering water that is potentially riddled with germs. So Danny says, hey, look, Debbie, Harry, can you take this bag off? Please and untie my hands. So he spotted yeah. straight away who it was. Mask one, Harry, basically. Shit, we have been rumbled. We might as well take our masks off. So what's all this about you being a snitch and bad mouthing the super lily whites? It's very disrespectful and unpleasant. I'm tempted to call you a snake in the grass. <laughs> Debbie, you are just asking to feel our ferocious heat. Heat. How do you think the posh feels? Hearing your poison, not very happy, I should think. I wouldn't be surprised if he had to pat his brow with a hanky. Danny says, all, all I said was that we should sign some bigger players, and if not, I'm up, off up north. Harry says, the grass isn't always greener, Danny. You get some very unpleasant types up north. 
Derby says, yes, there are people in Manchester with very slack manners and some people in Liverpool can be very sloppy in regards to their dental health. <laughs> Danny says, yeah, but I'll get paid five times as much a week and I might actually win something, you know. Harry says, don't be silly, Danny. Why are you telling us, Fibs? Super Spurs pay the best wages to the best people to achieve the best outcomes for the best fans. He says, look, if you don't believe me, listen to this message I got from Carl Walker. Plays on his phone. It says, hiya, Dan. Just wanted to confirm, yeah, I'm on 150k a week. Bloody hell. And I got this one from Adam Liliana. He says, all right, Dan, you fucker. I'm on 200k a week. Get your fat ass up here. In fact, I fucking insist that Moreno bloke we got at the moment is a fucking joke. <laughs> he don't even moisturise. Can you believe it? He's going to need bucket loads of concealer soon if we don't buck his fucking ideas up. So they realise, shit, it must be true. So Harry says, right, get in the car, Danny. If this is true, not only am I distressed and upset... I also feel I have been piffily whiffled. <laughs> Let's go and have it out with Mr. Levi. And off they go, right? Now, I know what happens, Andy, mm-hmm. but I want you to check the press, mm-hmm. keep an eye on your Twitter feeds, yep. etc. Yep. yep. and you check out and see what happens with Debbie and Ali. You'll be able to confirm that at a later date. Just keep your eyes on your Twitter feeds and that. Will do. Did you think that uh, story, Andy, I, so I like, had elements of that film Ronin. Do you know Ron? Um, the trench coat bit. Do you like, yes. There's a trench coat in that, that, isn't there? And the car, the, the fast... Or is that the Matrix? That might be the Matrix, Andy. Uh. Do you think that that film was a little... That story was a little bit like the Matrix? No. No, oh, you bastard. Hey, shall we have a, a trip to see um, Vince Parsnips and Marion? Oh, see right. They're up to you want Vince, Jim? sitcom. What would we call it? Dial P for parsnips? Something like that. Why not? We'll Here comes that. the theme tune. Right. Hey, Marion, get your suitcase back from your sister. We're going on holiday. Really, Vince? Really? But how? We haven't got any money. I know, and it's not going to cost us a penny. I've landed a job working as a holiday camp comic down south. Four weeks work and we head off tomorrow. Oh, Vince, that's amazing. Now I'll be able to afford to get the dogs wormed. It's going to be an adults only show, Marion, for after the kids have gone to bed. So I've written some slightly more risque material. Ooh. I've been working on it secretly for two months so I can surprise you. Hey, Vince, I'm all of a quiver. Go on then, let's hear some of your routine. All right, here we go. Hey, hey. Hey, come closer, I tell you, come closer. Do you remember, right, do you remember bonking? Hey, do you? Back in the 1980s. Yes. It was what we all did when shagging went out of business. Do you remember? Oh, madam, do you fancy a bonk later on, eh? Do you? Listen, though, listen, you'll like this one. Do you remember? Do you remember? No, seriously, do you remember? Porn bags in hedgerows. Do you remember them? A trying on your wife's brow when she was out? And that poster of the tennis lad scratching her ass? And watching Porky's on the VHS? And Porky's 2 on the VHS? Big tits! Little tits! Ooh, you weren't wrong, it is a bit blue, Vince. Where is it, Vince? When do we go? Here you go, Mary, and have a look at this letter. All the details are in here. Oh, let's have a look. Oh, this is very exciting. Right, so it's Camber Sands. And we'll head off first thing tomorrow morning. Oh, Vince. What's that, love? What's wrong? I don't think you've read this letter properly, Vince. Uh Uh-oh. It says you're going to be playing the role of Tommy Squeaker in the Billy Bonkers Daytime Fun Squad. You're going to be working in the kids' club, Vince. You can't use any of that material. What? Well, it took me weeks to write it. I'll never be able to come up with another routine by tomorrow. Oh, Vince. Hang on, Marion. I think I know who's behind this. It's that Robert fucking Webb again. Oh, Vince. (laughs) Robert Webb. Robert Webb. Causing problems. Causing problems for Vince. Um, I've asked Barry Ormo to come in. I thought you might like to interview him. Can you see him outside there? Shall I get Barry Ormo in? You want to interview him? 
Yeah, yeah, he's there. I'm just okay, saying through on. the door there. Go on, fetch him in. Put your microphone back in the right yeah, place right. when he comes in. I'll get out. I'll get, get out. I mean, yeah. You get out, yeah. <clears throat> Hi. Barry. Hi. Yup, yup, yup. Barry. Yep, yep, Hi. Yep, yep, Welcome yep. to the podcast. Hey, it's great um, to be here. Yeah. Yeah, all right. So, Barry, you're a homeowner, obviously. Yep. Um, would you give our listeners a quick description of your home? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, it's modern Georgian in an exclusive cul-de-sac, small grass front lawn, larger back garden, one-third decking, two-thirds lawn and borders, room for two cars on the drive, up and over automated garage door, really sweet. The sort of place an actor or a fine art dealer might aspire to. Yep, yep, yep. All right, so, what, a bit like Brookside? Yeah, that kind of um, upmarket vibe with the Georgian twist, yeah. All right, Georgian twist, right, okay. Uh, Barry, have you got uh, a mortgage or, you know, do you own the house outright and yeah. pay the mortgage off? Yeah, got you, yeah. I've got a fixed rate mortgage, right, that I switch a roo every two years. Banking industry fucking hates me. If there's a hoop, I jump into it with my eyes shut and my fucking shirt unbuttoned, pal. Wow. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. Barry, do you um, do you have a wife or girlfriend? Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. Well, I mean, my wife did a leave rooney on me about six months ago. Okay. Basically, we were incompatible partata. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Incompatible. So. Yeah. Um, I love sports. I love cars, designer clothes, designer haircuts, designer furniture. She was a slob. There, I said it. The fucking slobatatis idiosii. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you're off like Bob. <laughs> um, but Barry, what makes your house so special? Oh, uh, you know, I'm not sure. I mean, I think most of all it's the vibe. Yep. It's like, you know, it's like um, I went to Ibiza, yep. bottled the vibe and painted my walls with it, yeah? Have you been to Ibiza? No, man, I'm too busy making my money tree, you know what I mean? Yep, yep, yep. Right, what, what is it you do for a living, Barry? Yeah, I'm a dick model. <laughs> <laughs> Only jokes, yeah. I'm I'm head of telesales for Britain's fifth largest electrical retailer. Okay. Yeah, AO. I've got so <laughs> much responsibility on my shoulders that I have to wear a backpack 24 fucking 7. Okay. Yeah, what, yeah. what car do you drive, Barry? Yeah, red Audi TT, yeah. turbo diesel, one of the fastest sports cars in the south of England. <laughs> um, brutal if you floor it at the lights or at the car park exit opposite Frankie and Benny's, yeah. Uh, how, how tall are you, Barry? Um, I'd say medium height, yeah, medium height, yeah, medium height, around 5'5", five, five, yeah, that area. Medium, you say? Yeah, five, yeah, five? defo, yeah. You sure, yeah? Yeah, well, taller still when I'm wearing my cowboy boots, which I usually am, yeah. Okay, th- thanks thanks for joining us today, Barry Homeowner. Yeah, well, I hope you've enjoyed it. Hey, I'm just uh, um, networking out there in the office. Right. If you need any more, okay? Uh, if I do, I'll let you know. Thanks, yeah. Barry, yeah. Cheers. Yeah. That was hilario. Are we still on air? Yeah. I thought I was good, did you? Y- yeah, I'd probably get in the podcast, actually. That yeah, was no, it was right, fucking yeah. hilarious. You're really good. Yeah, See thanks. you anyway. Bye. Bye. So, how right. was he? Uh, bit of a prick. He's a bit of a prick, yeah. isn't he? Fuck, he's not very tall, is he? He provided a good two minutes of content, though, so that was good. Yeah, he's not very tall, is he? He's <laughs> tiny little fella. He'd do all right in a limbo contest. Shit, yeah. In Ibiza, if he ever went there. <laughs> So, I was in South Africa. Were you? As you know, last year it was. And, and um, lots of things happened to you. Some terrible things happened to me. So, I was in the hotel. I really fancied some chocolate. Did you ever get that? Oh, yeah. Usually, it's would be a flake or buttons. Mm-hmm. The, the taste of them will just enter my mind and I need them, right? I suck a twirl. Oh, twirl. A greasy to twirl. Yeah. With its greasy covering. The mm-hmm. ripple was fucking greasy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Milk's off. So I thought, well, oh yeah, uh, walked up there. So they didn't have any fucking. They had this. They had this chocolate cooking chocolate at the hotel. It was shit. So I thought I'll walk up. I'd seen a garage, just normal garage, shell garage sort yeah. of thing. So I walked up the road to see if they had any. As I walked through the forecourt, there was a bloke like cleaning, sweeping up, cleaning the pumps and that. Yeah. I said, "Oh mate, do you sell chocolate here?" And he says, um, "No mate, you need to go to Rudy's." Great selection. Blow your fucking mind. I said, I oh, where's Rudy's? And he spotted I was British. And so he said he'd show me. Right, I thought it was nice, nice of him. So we walk up the road a bit. Um, I'm, he, I, he says he really likes the bounty. Right. Uh, in fact, he says, I prefer the bounty. But the star bar is a genuine beauty. What are you going to get? I says, I fancy a Mars bar. Might even have a crunchy. Yeah. Um, get to Rudy's, he says... He says um, Wait here. Rudy doesn't like the British. Give me the rands and I'll get the bars. 
And I only have a 10 rand, yeah, it's about five pounds. Right. So I trust him, I give, I give him it. He comes out of a little carrier bag full of chocolate bars, asks me where I'm staying. I tell him, he says, oh, well, follow me, I know a shortcut. And he goes down this alley full of, like, i got to be honest, it was disgusting, like, full of dog dirt, used condoms, nappies, that sort of, like, sort yeah. of thing. And then suddenly he stops, Andy. So imagine how awful this is, and he pulls out a really long hunting knife. Shit. Sharp steel hunting knife. He says, take off your clothes and bend over so your nose is touching a dog bath. <laughs> <laughs> well, with a knife in my face, I, was like, what else can you I do? do as I'm told. Yeah. Yeah. Then he hands me a dairy milk, oh, right? He says, right? Take it out of the wrapper and move it into your anus. <laughs> oh, God. So I start taking up off off the, the wrapper and just yeah. then I hear another voice. Get out the fuck out of here, you fucking gangbanger. It's Rudy oh, from Rudy's store. He says, hi, I'm Rudy. You okay? I says, oh, yeah, thank you so much. <laughs> he was making me put chocolate into my ass. Do you think he would have killed me? He says, you bad English, he would have bludgeoned you with a condom full of dog bath. Fucking gangbangers, you got to love them. <laughs> and that's what another incident that happened in... Another incident in, involving the exposure of your yeah, ears to it's peril. Strange country. It's a very bizarre country. Yeah, yeah full of have, villains, full of heroes. Thought you would know. Have, that would have stopped after Mandela got out, but... but no, seemingly not. Just carrying on like that. Bob, we're going to have to end it, I'm afraid, because we've got Robert Peston and... Uh, Dara O'Brien outside. Ah! They've got the studio book from half 11, so we're going to have to call it a day. Yeah, I'd better get out before they arrive, haven't I? Uh, yeah, I think so. That's, that, that wind looks big enough to get out of over there, do you reckon? <laughs> See you, folks. I'm off. Bye.